when we talk about jobs, one of the things that would help everyone get back to work is if we had an effective, successful vaccine to prevent COVID-19, the coronavirus, to help us understand what's going on, because the CDC is telling states to get ready November 1, even though they haven't finished anywhere near phase three testing of this thing. Uh, we invite into the stream Professor Barry Bloom. He is a former dean at, uh, and a Jacobson Research Professor at Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. Good to have you here, Professor Bloom. And so much to break down here, but they're going to send a vaccine to the states before we've even gotten out of phase three trials. And phase three trials in a normal world, only 30% of vaccines ever work. Should I take the vaccine if they offer it to us? <laughs> um, well, let me just say that it's a, it's a really complicated supply chain management phenomenon uh, to get something like 200 million vaccine doses if there's a one-shot vaccine. And all the vaccines we are talking about right now are two-shot vaccines, such that there's a huge amount of preparation to be done from the manufacturers, through the CDC, through every um, uh, state and district that has a public health office that distributes vaccines traditionally uh, to hospitals, to doctor's offices, uh, sometimes to schools and common areas where people can go get their vaccines. So organizing that in advance is a very good idea. And it doesn't necessarily mean that on November 2nd, we will have uh, a vaccine available to anyone. But without the preparation, uh, it will be very difficult to get the vaccines as they are approved by the FDA um, to the vast number of people in the multiple phases that that will require. The big problem is once a vaccine is approved, it doesn't mean it's available for everybody. And there's an effort underway at the National Academy of Sciences, at the CDC, uh, to say when vaccines are limited, who gets them first? And the likelihood is first responders and essential personnel uh, who are at most risk should get, if they wish it, the first vaccines. Um, but at this point, no vaccine has been approved for uh, distribution in the US. None has been approved for sale and none has completed a phase three study to ascertain whether they are better than 50% at inducing protection and whether they are safe enough to consider giving to large numbers of people. Professor Anjali here. I, I'm curious about the perception, at least, of political influence. While Doc, uh, Secretary Azar um, did mention in an interview this morning that, you know, a, a career people at the CDC specifically name dropping um, and Nancy Metsonye uh, are the people who, you know, are determining the state, um, there has been concern from the very beginning that there are political influences um, in this. So as of right now, is it feasible um, that we get a vaccine by November and then the process of distribution, um, you know, while they're already producing them, the distribution process requiring refrigerators and such, um, how that will all play out and can it be ready in time? Can it be ready in time comes in two speeds. One is, can there be sufficient data in the phase three trials by the beginning of November where the independent um, data safety and management boards that each vaccine company has to have that examines the data and they're the only ones who have access to data during the course of any trial. Their role is to keep their eye open for any serious adverse effects that would lead them to recommend the trial stop or if the trial seems to be 100% effective or 95% effective, do you want to have another 15,000 people in the placebo group not being protected? And in the circumstance where a new product seems to be spectacularly effective and not making it available would put those in the control group at risk, there is a possibility that the DMS, DSMB can recommend that the trial be stopped because the results are clear. 
In this circumstance, very few scientists believe the first set of vaccines with the new platforms that we've never used in any vaccines before have a likelihood of being in the 95% protection level that would enable anyone to say this is so good that we don't have to get all the data. I think the scientific view is let's run the trial out and get statistically sound data, both on how effective it is and also the more people that are in these trials will tell us what the rate is that we have to worry about of any adverse effects. Professor, if, if this works, could it change the future of how we approve vaccines for delivery and testing? I hope not. I think the procedures for approving vaccines are really uh, carefully thought out, honed over many years, tested in the case of H1N1, tested in the case of Ebola. I don't think the rules need changing. I think they need to be adhered to. And that's what many in the scientific community are concerned about, of taking a shortcut for non-scientific reasons. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.